well with the recent um, hot post of your husband on Instagram. Why are you just about to respond to um, the allegations? The honest truth is when I was I was in my bedroom when um, my friend walked into the room with a couple of other people and woke me up and um, basically just started narrating what had happened. So when when someone wakes you up from sleep, you my, my my the honest truth. My first thought was, I thought maybe they found him dead. Um, and then when they said they didn't know where he was, my my thought was, and everybody's thought was, we need to find him. He's suicidal. We need to find him. We need to make sure he's alive and he's well. So my initial thought was not. I didn't even know what he had said. It was just, let's find him. Let's make sure he's okay and he's he's alive. So I I couldn't I couldn't respond to anything because I didn't even know the extent of of what he had said until um, much later. Because a lot of people, um, someone actually took my phone away from me. They didn't want me to see um, what was said online and I, I was just I was just scared for his for his life I was I was just panicking so at what point did you got did you find out that he was okay and that nothing is wrong with him um at about um I think 10 11 um, um we got a call we were in we were in my bedroom um, um Banky's mom came and she was praying, we were all praying. <clears throat> I know that his family in LA were praying as well. And so about 10, 11, um, we yeah. got um, AM, we got the call that um, he had been found on Lecky Bridge and um, at least he was safe. He was, I believe, in Banky's house and he was okay. Okay, now, I remember very well, two years ago, we were all in Dubai for your wedding. Mm -hmm. um, this is like, if I'm not wrong, it's supposed to be your anniversary. Mm -hmm. and I saw on Instagram, you posted um, videos of you guys celebrating your new single, which was trending yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, TJ wasn't there. So at what point, you know, that, um, about, at what point did all this um, event started? My marriage has, and my relationship has been very public. And at one point, I, I decided that I, I didn't want to make it public anymore. Um, so I was, I'm always nervous when it comes to his birthday, um, because if I post, it's they read meaning into what I post. But if I don't post, then it means we've broken up or there's a problem in our relationship. So when I knew the anniversary was coming and I knew I was either going to have to post happy anniversary or not post. The honest truth is for the past two months, TJ and I have not been together. And um, it was something that we were trying to work through. But for me, I knew that this marriage wasn't going to work, and it's been like that for the past two months. So I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know if I should post and keep up appearances, and I didn't know if I should not post and face reality. So, um, did he try to contact you yesterday, and you know, maybe via phone call or? to see if it means the anniversary, even if you guys are not going to be together again. I hadn't spoken to TJ since uh, about a, a week now. Um, he had left the house and um, we were supposed to get some documents for my son. So... Um, what kind of documents? Um, we were supposed to get his passport. Okay. 
um, and I was calling him because he had booked the application online for him and so I was calling him on Sunday night like the interviews on Monday you know what time is it do you have all the documents and he he was reading the messages but he wasn't responding I remember I sent a message and I said TJ please let's at least be friends and good parents to Jamil and whatever is happening between the two of us please let's do this for Jamil we need to go to the embassy and he didn't respond and I just I, I left it I said I know one day we'll apply for his passport so you said um, for one week at the most people at what point did you also realize that you need to move on with your life and what are the things that um, made you make your mind that you have to move on your life that today? I've covered I've covered up for a lot of a lot of hurt in in our relationship. I um, I was in Jamaica um, recently, and um, just before I went to Jamaica, I found out I was pregnant again, and um, um, and we both discussed it, um, and we were just trying to find out how we were going to manage the situation. Um, another baby so soon. Um, so I went to London and I got on a 10-hour flight to Jamaica to shoot a video with the Busy Signal. Um, the, the morning that we were supposed to shoot the video, um, I, was, I was doing my makeup, I was ready to go on set. Um, I started bleeding uncontrollably. Um, so I, I started panicking. I I called TJ. I um, I took pictures um, and and sent it to him. Um, then I I kind of passed out. I <laughs> and they rushed me to the hospital. Um, I had complications. Um, at one point I was trying to reach him and I couldn't get through to him. So. Um, Thompson, who was with me, um, just had to help me sign all the documents. Um, I got discharged from the hospital. Um, I was trying to call TJ um, to let him know what happened. He he didn't call to see how it was, what happened. Everything happened. I got back to Nigeria. Um, and while we were sleeping, um, his phone was going off. Um, and it was in the middle of the night and I kept on seeing um, he saved the numbers edible catering or something like that <clears throat> to me that didn't make sense why is a catering company calling somebody at 2 a.m. in the morning and yes as a woman I picked up his phone and I went through his phone and I got into his whatsapp and there's a long conversation with this same edible number um, saying, uh, um, can, can we meet at the hotel tonight? D um, do you live alone? Um, is it okay if I come by? Then the last message that I saw between them was, um, she's saying, um, I left, I, I had to leave, um, at 7 a.m. this morning. You were sleeping when I left. And he now responded, um, wow, yeah, because you knocked me out last night. Um, it was a great night. So, obviously, I, I wake him up and I'm like, what's going on? And he said to me, um, it's not what I think. I said, "Was does this all happen in our bed? He said, no, it was in a hotel. So I said, you took another woman to a hotel room. He said, yeah, but nothing happened that they were just chilling in the hotel till 7 in the morning, just you and another woman. And he wanted me to believe that. The thing that hurt me the most was this happened. The period I was in Jamaica, 
and I was in the hospital. And I sent TJ pictures, which I have. Sent TJ pictures and he was busy in a hotel with another woman while I was in a hospital and I couldn't reach you and you couldn't even be bothered to find out how I was. These are the pictures I sent of what happened. Blood everywhere, me in the hospital and he didn't respond. At this point, I packed my stuff, I got my son, I went to my friend's house, her name is Tilla as well, I went to her house, I, st I stayed the night there and she asked me one question, she said, what's, what's the next step? And I said to her, Tilla, I'm done. I am done. Obviously he's been doing some stuff for now with you. Azuka, I don't think we have enough time to to cover I don't I don't I don't know where to start. I don't I don't know which which one to say first. Um I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know where to start. I don't know. I've I've covered up for so long. i because I wanted I wanted people to believe this story of TJ is the one that takes care of me. TJ is the head of the house. TJ is a loving husband. TJ is the one that made me, took me from nothing to something. I wanted people to believe that. I wanted him to feel like a man. I covered up so many times. Since my son has been born, TJ has not spent one naira. The hospital bills? I paid for hospital bills. I paid for his flight to come to London. I paid for the apartment, the hotel, the short stay we stayed in for two months. The groceries we did, the clothes, the pushchair, the nursery, everything. Even while we were in London, we went shopping for him, TJ. Not just my son, for TJ. So that when we come back to Nigeria, he will have new things. Paid for everything. And his excuse sometimes is, I don't have money, I don't have money, I don't have money. And I try to pay for everything so that not that I try to, I have to pay for everything. Otherwise, where will we be? So that he can go out and hustle or focus on the contract he's looking for or the business he's looking for. And he, he will tell me he doesn't have money to buy diapers or anything, but he has money to get haircuts twice a week. He has money to do laundry. He has money to take women to hotel rooms. Because you're not going to sit here and tell me that it's the woman that's paying the, the hotel bill or the food that you guys are eating in the hotel. But you know, the, you know there's this thing that once a woman is more successful than a man, she disrespects him. But he also said you have never asked him one day if, if he has eaten, that you don't cook for him. Um, maybe because we don't live with you guys in your home. He said you've never asked him one day if he has if he has eaten and for the past two years you have not cooked for him so is it possible that um, you could be doing everything for him but you still don't respect him as a husband that's a lie i i'm not going to sit here and lie and say every time i come home i cook um, and i'm not going to make excuses and say um, because of my career i'm too i'm too busy to cook I'm the same person that works and puts the money in the house. I'm the same person that works long hours to make sure we have a roof over our head. I come home late, sometimes very tired, sometimes I'm out of the country. 
there's not one time that if I come downstairs and I make something that I don't make for TJ. There's never a time. And because I know what my schedule is, I had to hire a cook. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. To hire somebody to be cooking in the house. For him and myself. And the other people that live in the house. He he said I don't I don't I don't ask him if he's hungry, which is a lie. But even if it's true, the things he puts me through will not even encourage me to want to ask ah my husband have you eaten when you come home you go home you go out and you come home at seven in the morning the next morning sometimes 2 p.m the next morning am i going to cook for someone that's not in the house you come back drunk you come back angry you come back we're living on eggshells. We never know what mood he's in. And that's the person I'm going to be saying, oh, my husband hasn't eaten. I should go down. You come back at 7 a.m. in the morning, so I should wake up and, and go downstairs and make breakfast when I don't know where you've been. Sometimes TJ will go out and he will not call. He will not tell me. I'll wake up the next morning at 8 a.m. and look, realize that he hasn't been in the house. At that point, I'm not even angry that maybe he's with another woman. At that point, I'm even just scared for his safety. Is he alive? I'll be calling his phone frantically. Not because I want to find out that he's been with another woman, but because I want to even just make sure that you didn't go and drink and drive and then get into an accident. So I'll just be praying that, okay, I, I even, I, I'm even praying that, let him even be with another woman so at least I know that he's alive, that it's not, he didn't get into an accident. So is that the person I'm going to be asking, have you eaten? When you come in at that time of the morning. When you sacked him as a manager, mm. what did he, what did, what was it, what did he start doing after you sacked him as a manager? I will never discredit or take away that TJ hustled for me. I will never deny that he worked hard for me or that he believed in me. But what I will say is at one point I had to say when when is when it, we would go for he was my manager. He was booking events and he would book shows. Um, the first time I realized that there was some kind of foul play was I he booked me for a, a wedding in London and I kept on company policy is that you don't go to the event until they pay you, they pay you for. So as normal, I was like, okay, is this event still happening? He said, yeah, I'm in London already and um, I'm calling the accountant that, okay, can you confirm payment has gone, everything is cool for me to perform. She said, ah, they still haven't paid. So I called TJ and I said, TJ, these people haven't paid. Like, And TJ's like, no, just go, just perform, don't worry. Everything is fine, just go and go. I said, but TJ, you know this is not right. We don't normally do this. He said, don't worry. Um, like, fortunately for me, I know the guy that was one of the people organizing the wedding. So I pulled him aside and I said, sorry, boss, I know you, like, you're not like this. Like, what's going on with payments? Uh, it's not fair, I'm already here. It's an hour to the to the reception I'm supposed to perform. And he told me, what are you talking about? We've paid from about four months ago. And I was like, no, my accountant said there's no payments. So we started tracing and I said, okay, please, can you, send me the account you paid into. And he said they paid X amounts of money into such and such account, which was TJ's personal account, not company account. The other thing was TJ declared that the show was for, I'll give an example, the show was for 3 million, but they really paid 4.5. 
So he declared three million, and he obviously pocketed the other four point five. He didn't tell me, and then out of the three million, he's still receiving his management fee of forty percent, which is I don't know if you know my industry. I used to pay. Me and him used to split forty. In fact, it was higher at one point. And you know, from people starting advising me that you cannot be sharing fifty-fifty, that I reduced my share of it and said, look, it has to be sixty-four. But even that sixty-forty is high for management. So what you did in that instance is you took money already, and then you now even collected your percentage, and you didn't. You didn't feel anything. You're you're stealing from your wife. You're stealing from, and he doesn't. He didn't see it as him stealing. You're stealing from me. And so I had to perform at the wedding for free, because he had already swindled the money. I don't know what he did with it. He also said that、um, your mom. He accused the mom for violating the word witchcraft. He actually said your mom wanted to turn him, turn him the way he turned your dad, that over his dead body, and that your mom has practically、um, embarrassed him. I think several. So, does your mom live? Does your mom live with you in the house, or she just came for a, a visit? Now my mom is、um, based in the UK, and、um, sorry when I <coughs> when I had Jamil.、Um, She she moved back to Nigeria with us, and、um, again, like if anybody has ever met my mother, she's she's not like that. She's she's a sweet sweet lady. She's in fact she's very British, so she's not hung up on traditions and culture. Sometimes you know she's just. She she doesn't judge. She's not saying because、um, this is my daughter,、um, and you're you're treating her this way. I'm going to judge you. In fact, a lot of times, a lot of times, my mom would say to me, "Tiwa, you're the wife. Be patient. Don't、uh, don't shout. Don't curse.、Um, you just have to stomach a lot of things. The woman is the one that builds the home." You know all these things she used to, and TJ would go and tell my mom. You know whenever we have issues, because my mom would always calm him down, and she's been nothing but a great support for me. So there's not the time your mother and TJ had the quarrel or anything. I mean, I'd love for him to maybe tell me. Maybe there's something I don't know. I'd love for him to tell me if the if there's something that. My mother has done. I have no idea. He also said,、um, "Remember, the one of the things that triggered、um, everybody in social media when he accused you of—I、um, don't know if I use the word—the、um, F word that、um, you were sleeping with Jazzy, Doctor Seed, Two Face. What's the relationship with them?" I will say, for the record, I have never cheated on my husband. Never, not with Don Jazzy, not with Doctor Sid, not with Two Face, not with any body. And I'm willing to take a lie detector test for that. I have never cheated on my husband, and Tunji knows this. He knows that in his heart. I was going to say this, but sometimes, like when we're in the studio, one of the things that、um, like Tunji and some some of my other label me. Oh. 
some of the things they say is that I'm very good at interviews. I'm very good with being diplomatic and knowing how to how to carry myself in difficult situations. And this hurts. I'm not going to lie and tell you I haven't seen comments or seen what, what people are saying about me. It's not It's not true. From what I can deduce from the whole drama, obviously, um, two years now done, how to do with fin uh, finance. Could it be that, um, I don't know, you are his wife, could it be that um, because of his, his incapabilities to, um, to provide for you, uh, maybe he feels that you are the one, you are, he, maybe, or maybe he wishes that he was in your shoes. Since you're 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 the breadwinner of the family, or is there more to it that we don't know? Because why would he want to be attempting suicide? I mean, if um, if it's just a normal marital problem, I know that um, not just for any man, any human being, when your finances are not straight, you'll be depressed. It will bother you. So. I know that for a while, since he stopped working for uh, as my manager, he's been struggling financially. But that wasn't my fault. I loved when we were working together. Everybody loved us as TJ and Tiwa. But you messed up. You started stealing from me. You started being fraudulent. And so I had no choice. I wanted to save my marriage. So I had no choice but to separate business from marriage, to say, okay, we can't work together. But so let's let's not work together and let's save the marriage. But TJ loves to keep up with the Joneses. He he wants to live a life that is not true. So you don't have steady income coming in right now, but you want to live larger than life. He went to buy a car, that a Mercedes, that he knew he didn't have enough money Did to pay the car for him. Or no, he 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 saved up and he paid part of it, and so um, the person who he had owed the balance to kept on calling and calling, and he wants his balance. I ended up paying the balance for TJ. Which was how much? About three point something. And he says I took away his manhood, but you're running dead up and down. And because I don't, I want to cover sorry, your shame. Sorry to put, what do you think he, he he's trying to imply by saying he took away his manhood? Like I'm not let, allowing him to to be a man. He doesn't want people to really know that I'm the I'm the breadwinner. I'm the one that make the money. I'm the one that funds everything. And so I get that. And I, as a woman, I don't want people to look down on my man. I want to pretend and lie that oh, he's the one paying for this. He's the one buying me all these you know fancy things and stuff. I I want to look like that. I want to feel like you know I'm the little queen and my husband is you know taking care of me. And so. When it was time to pay, <clears throat> I put the money in his account so that he can pay the person he owes so that they won't know it's really coming from me. He also went out to buy a Rolex watch and he didn't p end up paying, finished, he, didn't, he couldn't finish paying, paying the balance. And so they called me as well. And also because I'm always scared that I don't want it to get out in press, because a lot of people use that to threaten me sometimes that if your husband doesn't pay, we're going to go to press. Why are they going to press? Because they know my name, Tiwa Savage's husband. And all the time, because I'm always trying to avoid this, I'll find a way to find money to put in his account 
so that he can pay and pay off the debt. You, you're putting us in debt all the time. You're going out to clubs, carrying women to clubs, spending money on drinks, then you leave the tab, you don't pay it, the club owner will call me and I'll end up going to pay or sending my assistant to pay or putting the money into your account so you can pay off all the time. I'm the one working, getting money, and you're not even helping me to manage the small money that we're getting. You're putting us in debt for things that I'm not enjoying. And the worst, the, the, the last thing that happened that I think really triggered this whole thing was that he went to borrow money from someone for 45 million. 45 million Naira. And he's lost it. Did he invest in the business or just uh... I just found out. I have no idea. I just got a call. I was in the studio. I was recording. I got a call that um, ES EFCC uh, um, have a petition or they're investigating uh, a case. My brother called me from London. Um, he said, please, um, 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 what's, what's TJ's account name? I said, Ibrahim Balogun. He sent me an account number. I said, is this his account? Um, I confirmed it. I said, yes. He said, he got on the phone. He, um, I, I left the studio. He said, TJ is in big trouble. He said, he's in deep trouble. Some people might hurt him. I said, why? What's going on? And he said, I need to be careful as well. Because we all know in situations when someone owes money and that person goes in hiding, who do they come after? They come after his family. They might kidnap his family, me or his son, and say until he pays the money, they will not release us. So in my frantic, and this is the period where we're not together, in my frantic mode to try and suppress this situation. I went to one of my big bros who I know can help. And even he said, where will he find 45 million to bail TJ? Where will I find 45 million to bail him out now? 45 million that you did not tell me you went to borrow. That you did not spend on me, that you did not spend on your son. A week ago, I told TJ that I, we're running out of uh, milk. Jamil's um, food and he didn't do nothing and you borrowed 45 million and you complain to everybody that can listen to you that you don't have money but you cut your hair twice a week you dry clean your clothes did you ask him what he did with the money maybe he I haven't spoken to him since all I've been trying to do is try and help him try and find somebody that will give me 45 million so that they don't kill him or so that EFCC don't carry him or this news does not come out what did you do with 45 million? where do I want to find it? or should we talk about the fact that I walked in on him taking cocaine in my house? where was that? Um, we were still living in 1004 then, so I believe about uh, just after we got married. I didn't even know he had, I didn't even know he takes cocaine. I was upstairs recording with spells. Um, I noticed he was downstairs for a long time. I even came downstairs thinking maybe he was warming food or something. I walk into the kitchen, his back was turned, so I literally was standing there. And I saw him. It's not him. Yeah. So I screamed, TJ! He turned around, quickly the paper, put it in his pocket, but he still had white powder on his nose. So I said, what? I screamed, is that cocaine? He started screaming at me, what am I doing down here? What am I talking about? What cocaine? Am I crazy? Where's the cocaine? Where's the cocaine? I've come again. So the first thing I did was call his parents that, come on, your son, no. weed, I can't even say I can manage, alcohol, but cocaine. How does someone that claims he doesn't have money, 
take cocaine. Cocaine, from what I understand, is for rich people, no? I'm very captain, I think so too. So I'm dealing with your alcohol problem because he admits he has that. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with the fact that you come home late most nights. I'm dealing with infidelity. I'm dealing with cocaine. I'm dealing with bad debt. I'm dealing with a husband who is jealous of his wife's success. Sorry, um, I was going to ask you, before you guys decided to I um, mean, walk up the eye, did you know, like, um, were there no signs that, you know, I mean, the signs were just probably because you loved him so much or you just feel that time was not on your hand, you want to get married? It's a combination of everything, yes. I, I didn't I didn't know about the cocaine. Um, I didn't know about the um, other child, apart from the two that he tells everybody on social media. I didn't yeah, know about I guess the other I was going to ask about this, um, that I, is yeah. it true that he has a child in Nigeria too? Yes. Apart from the ones in America? Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know about those. But yes, I'm, going, I'm not going to lie and tell you I didn't see signs. I mean, even a lot of people warned me about the type of person TJ is. Um, I'm going to say I made a mistake. I'm not ashamed to say it at this point. And everybody since at the beginning, everyone says you can't walk out of a marriage, our culture frowns on it, you have to stay in it, you have to make it work. Mm -hmm. Okay, I made a mistake. Do I want to wait 10 years? Do I want to wait 15 years? If you're not happy, you can leave. And I was scared. Will I ever find somebody, like he said, oh, my age, Will I, I'm, I'm getting up there. And now I have a child. Will I ever find happiness? Will I ever find somebody else to marry me? That's the misconception that I feel sometimes in our society. It's I don't care at this point if I never get married again. I don't care. Do you know what I care about? I care about being happy for Jamil. I care about being strong. I care about not walking on eggshells. I care about not knowing what state he's going to be in. And yes, you know what, I, I, I do want a man that works. That will help me with my financial burden. I'm not saying he has to be a millionaire, a billionaire, but somebody that can help. Or at least not put me in more debt. Has he, has he been like abusive or something? Has he, has he actually? No. No. And I'll never play that victim card of, you know, it's an abusive, physically abusive relationship, but it was a mentally abusive relationship. Because from Every day, all I hear from TJ is, I made you, you're nothing without me. I'm the one that created you. I took you from nothing. You didn't find me in a dustbin. Well, look at your old pictures when I met you. Look at you now. So, I know you guys are... I know you guys did traditional wedding, introduction, registry, white wedding. So are you saying that the marriage is finally over? Yes. It's been over for a while. And I've covered up for a while. Um, I think what happened was God sent. I thought you guys never crying in Dubai. <laughs> I think what happened was God sent because he made it easier for me to walk away. 
because of what he did on social media, he he made it easy in the sense that he he got so many people angry. He pulled so many innocent names into this. He dragged many people plus his own family that if I was to even consider that I wanted to get back and work it out, there's so many people that will look at me and say, this thing happens again, you can't come and cry to us. So he's made it easy for me to finally walk away. Well, are you going to like, um, you know, you have a son with TJ right now. So how, will, I mean, parenting, how will it... Um... I'll never stop him from seeing Jamil, never, never. Even today when everything happened, a lot of people were in the house and Jamil is still saying, dad, 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 and I'm saying it with him as well. That's his first word. But the only thing I want to promise myself is to bring him up to be a good man. So, all in all, how do you just, I mean, what, I mean, in summary, your, your journey with um, TJ was just, um... I, no, I don't, I, even till now, I don't wish anything bad on him. Because even when he was abusing me and saying all the things he was saying on Instagram, my, at first I was still just concerned about, and I still am till now. In fact, as we're doing this interview, I'm worried that he might see this interview and it might trigger something else and make him do, make him really go and do something bad. I'm worried. I don't, I don't want my son to grow, grow up and hear, God forbid, that your, your father committed suicide. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't wish that. And I, 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 tonight, I'm still going to pray for him. Yeah, but does he have like, um, like, hold on, like, went out? He must do, because, you know, he was getting help at one point, you know, when the whole cocaine thing, thing came out and he said he needed help. And you see, the funny thing is all of this stuff that's coming out on social media now is, what has been happening for a long time. He needs help and we, we get him help. He goes to see a counselor or a doctor or a pastor, you know, and he uses his own hands to ruin things again. If I didn't care about him or his well-being, I wouldn't I won't be covering up for a lot of things. I won't be going around trying to find help for him, even now. Even now, with everything he's done, I still want to to find a way to help him out of his debt, because I feel like even, okay, at least if he's out of this situation, then he can begin to heal and move forward. I just, I just want to say this. If there's anything that maybe I've overlooked to Tunji, I am sorry. I am absolutely sorry. If there's anything on my part that I've done, maybe I've not made you feel like a man, maybe I haven't loved you enough, maybe I've neglected some things that I, that I can't think of. I'm Sanji, I'm sorry because you, but you know, you know, you know I tried everything, you know, you know I, I, I love you so much and I'm sorry. I never wanted to divorce, I never wanted to come to this and I'm just really sorry and I want him to get better. And I'm not saying this for the camera, but I'll always pray for him. <laughs>